How's it going everyone? This is Nick with ReVenture Consulting. Super excited to be back here with another market deep dive for you guys where we take a look into a new city, a new real estate market around the US every week. And we look at what the data has to say on that market, the hard data from sources like the US Census Bureau, Bureau of Labor Statistics, Zillow. And today I'm super excited because we're taking a look at Boise, Idaho. And Boise, this is a big one because Boise is actually the fastest growing highest appreciation market in America. There is no city in the US that is growing real estate values faster than Boise. In fact, home prices in Boise over the last five years have more than doubled, more than doubled, over 100% growth in just five years. Uh, the typical home price, a typical homeowner in Boise, you would have paid around 220,000 for a home five years ago. Now that same home is 440,000 today. So we're gonna take a look at the hard data on Boise in this video, and we're gonna ask two big questions. The first is, is now the right time to buy in Boise, right? In the ninth inning of a real estate cycle with prices already super high, is now the right time to buy? Or should we wait? Or is Boise like in a big housing bubble and is it smarter for people to wait until the bubble bursts? The second thing that we're gonna look at is, what are the best areas within Boise to invest, right? Because Boise actually covers a lot of lot of land area, a lot of different towns, a lot of different real estate submarkets. What are the ones with you know the most affordability, the best value, the most appreciation? If you're a real estate investor or a home buyer looking into Boise, you need to know the detail on the specific neighborhood. So we're going to cover that as well. All right, guys. Without further ado, let's get into the data on Boise. <laughs> All right, guys, so I think we need to start with a basic education on Boise, because for people who aren't from there or who don't know about Idaho, you might be scratching your head and saying, what, what's going on in Boise? And that's one of the most thriving, growing economies in the US. Boise is top of the charts for job growth, uh, for inward migration over the last, not just two to three years, but the last five, 10, 15 years. Boise is just one of the fastest growing cities in America. Lots and lots of people from all over the country, especially from California, are moving to Boise, and that's really propelling the economy forward. And um, as a result, we're seeing huge, huge increases in real estate prices in Boise. And when I say huge, uh, I don't mean just like a lot. I mean the highest of any uh, city in America. No city in America is experiencing more appreciation than Boise. Home values in the last five years have more than doubled across the Boise, Idaho metro area. No other uh, semi-large metro, Boise's population is about 800,000. No metro area with that population or higher comes even close to Boise. Boise is just number one when it comes to home price growth. And you can see what I'm talking about on this map where we're looking at every single large metro area in America. And we're looking at the color coding here. The redder the metro area looks, the higher the appreciation over the last five years. This is data that comes from Zillow uh, showing the appreciation of the typical home uh, across the last five years. The bluer the metro looks, uh, the lower the appreciation is. And what jumps off the page, look where the red is on this map. And you see really quickly, this is where it's coming from. That's where Boise, Idaho is. And um, you can see typical price back in 2016 was 213,000. Today, it's 438,000 plus 105%. So guys, I spend a lot of time putting this data together and sharing with you. I really love doing that. In return, all I ask is just please hit that like button. If you hit the like button, it tells YouTube it's a good video and gets me more exposure. And just, uh, yeah, I would really appreciate it if you could hit that like button. Also, comment, let me know. I wanna hear your feedback, especially if you're in and around Boise or Idaho. I wanna hear what uh, you, you know your feelings are on the market. What are you seeing out there? Um, when you guys comment, it makes me more uh, informed and I love interacting with you guys and make sure to respond to pretty much every comment. All right, let's get back to the video. Absolutely crazy appreciation. No other area is quite like it. You can actually see that Boise is in this pocket of kind of like the mountain regions of the US as well as the Northwest. This pocket in general is seeing a lot of appreciation. Uh, in addition, Idaho Falls 
in Idaho, as well as Coeur d'Alene, are also seeing really strong growth. But Boise just comes in uh, ahead of the rest, number one, with over 100% appreciation the last five years. Now, I think a lot of people get excited when they see that. They see, oh my God, 100% growth in five years. I need to buy there because I'm going to become a millionaire. I'm going to become super wealthy if I buy real estate in Boise. And it's at this point where I need to put i need to put on the brakes here for you guys because when you see a market appreciating as much as boise is that's actually a warning sign that's a warning sign because real estate markets should not be able to double their value in five years historically that's just not what real estate does it's historically a much more slower steadier asset class so when you see prices doubling across a large metro area in five years that's a warning flag right there that's a warning flag that the market is in a bubble and actually i believe that boise is in the biggest housing bubble of any city or metro area in america uh, you know, it was great if you bought in Boise five, six, seven years ago, you did really, really well. But if you're buying in Boise today, uh, you're buying at the peak. You're spending a lot, a lot of money uh, for real estate in a metro with people, you know, kind of have low wages in a metro where there's lots and lots of land to build. Very, very risky situation. And the troubling thing is that Boise is just a volatile market in general. If you go back to the last housing crash, uh, from 07 to 2012, Boise got hit very hard back then. So this market has a history of volatility, right? A history of volatility, that's gonna make you concerned. And you can see what I'm talking about on this graph where we're comparing Boise's historical typical home price, again, data from Zillow, to the, to the US average. So Boise is the blue line, the US average is the gray line. And you can see that um, for a long time, Boise and the US were, had very similar home prices. So if you go back to, you know, 98 or so, uh, you know, Boise was around 150,000, the US was around 113, so Boise was a little higher. But then, you know, for much of the next two decades, close to two decades, Boise and the US home prices kind of moved close together. But you can see what I was talking about with the, the big um, decline in Boise's real estate market last time around. So in February 08, Boise's market peaked at 219,000 typical home price. It then crashed down to 138,000 by June 2011. So that was almost a 40% decline in home prices in Boise during the last housing downturn. Uh, and then of course they rebounded and they stayed pretty close to the US average until about 2015, 2016. And then all of a sudden Boise just started separating. I mean, look at the parabolic growth on this line. It's almost going straight up. I mean, home prices in Boise have basically tripled from what they were in June 2011 to April 2021. And as we said earlier, they've doubled uh, from the point that they were about five years ago. And now the gap between Boise and the rest of the U.S. is very, very large, the gap in home prices here. So we can't write Boise off just because it has a volatile pass and just because it's had a lot of appreciation. I mean, it does legitimately have a lot of great things going on in its economy and a lot of people moving to the city every year, right? But the problem is, and this is a problem in a lot of growth markets in America right now, whether it's Boise, Austin, Salt Lake, Raleigh, people see the strong growth of, let's just say, the last five years, the strong job growth, the strong migration, and they kind of blow it out of proportion. They, they try to say that what these markets are experiencing today is at some greater level than it experienced before. And that's just not true. These markets like Boise, they've been growth markets for a long time. It's not as if Boise is adding that many more people today than it was 15 years ago prior to the last housing crash. So we really need like proper historical context here because if you wanna, if you wanna justify paying 440,000 for, you know, that's the typical home in Boise. If you want something nice, you're gonna have to pay more. If you wanna justify that, you gotta be sure, right, that, you know, the, the economic and demographic fundamentals are really in your favor. And unfortunately, that's not clear in Boise. It's, what's clear is that Boise has good growth, but that growth is just basically the same as it's always been. You can see what I'm talking about on this graph where we're looking at the two components of population growth in Boise. We're looking at the inward migration, the net migration, uh, which is the green line, and that's simply the amount of people moving in minus the amount of people moving out. And then we're looking at the natural increase in population, which is the blue line, which is births minus deaths. 
And um, there's a couple of trends you can see here. You know, the first that pops out is this green line, like Boise legitimately does have really strong inward migration, right? You know, 14,000, 16,000, 17,000 net people per year moving to Boise. That's really strong. However, it's been really strong for a while. Like Boise added 15,000 people in 2017. It added 17,500 in 2020. It's not as if during the pandemic, Boise doubled or tripled the amount of people moving there, right? This is kind of a marginal bump. And if we go back to the early to mid 2000s, you can see that Boise was doing similar levels of inward migration back then. You see 15,000 in 05, 17,000 in 06, 13,000 in 07, right? So Boise is a market that when the economy is expanding, right? And there's like good growth expectations, Boise is gonna do well. Right, but then you can see what happened after the last housing crash is that the migration crashed down. And I wouldn't be surprised if something similar again happens with Boise, where even though this number 17,000 is good, um, I wouldn't bank on this going forward, right? For instance, if anything were to ever happen in California that made California more attractive, like say real estate prices in California went down, that would strip a lot of the demand that's coming into Boise. The other problem I see is this blue line, this natural increase in population, right? Which was around 5,000, 6,000 in the mid 2000s. Well, that's all the way, all the way down to less than 3,000 today. So the natural increase in population in Boise has gotten cut in half over the last 15 years. And that's actually primarily due to the amount of deaths in Boise going up, right? So Boise, like most cities in America is beginning to age. And as the city starts to age, we're gonna see an increase in the amount of death. So a lot of the, Long-time homeowners in Boise um, are unfortunately, just, you know, they might be baby boomers, maybe a little older. They're going to start to die, right? And as they die, that's actually going to lower population growth and release housing inventory into the market. So this decline uh, in uh, natural increases is something that's not unique to Boise. In most markets across the U.S., this is happening. But I think the overall point to get from this graph is that, yes, while Boise does have strong economic and demographic growth, it's not as if what they're achieving now is some leaps and bounds figure better than what they did prior to the last housing crash. So in Boise, we have crazy real estate appreciation, right? A doubling in five years, a tripling in 10 years, uh, the highest appreciation in the country. But then we have demographic growth, which is good, but it's not accelerating, right? So the real estate appreciation is accelerating. The demographic growth is not accelerating. It's basically staying pretty stable. And that's warning flag number one. You have accelerating real estate prices with, um, good but stable demographic growth. So the real estate prices are going like this. The demographic growth is kind of just going like that. It's, it's good, but it's stable. So there's like a disconnect in the prices and the growth. The other problem in Boise is that wages just simply aren't keeping up. Wages are not keeping up with home prices. And this is actually the biggest concern I have for Boise is that the average wage for the average worker in the economy is $26 an hour, according to data from the Bureau of Labor Statistics. $26 an hour is really low. Uh, that's probably in like the 25th or 30th percentile of US metro areas. And when you have $26 an hour average wages and a typical home price of 450,000 that's rapidly accelerating, that's a nasty combination. And if you guys watched my best versus worst real estate cities video that came out a couple weeks ago, um, definitely watch it if you haven't, I'll have a link to it in the description. You'll see that one of the biggest causes of the housing crash in 07, 08, and the markets that got hit the hardest were the ones where prices outgrew wages the most. And that's exactly what's happening in Boise right now. Prices are outgrowing wages, and that's going to create problems for when the market um, heads into a downturn. But essentially what's going to happen is a lot of the external demand and a lot of the external investors from other parts of the country, California, what have you, once prices start to go down, they're going to sell, right? Because they, they invested for profit, so they're going to sell if they see prices going down. They're gonna to try to sell at what the prevailing values are. The problem is the local people in Boise who are the fundamental demand cannot afford homes at those prices. So that's why you're gonna see a nasty downturn in prices in a place like Boise when it starts to occur. You can see this phenomenon represented on this graph, which looks at the value to earnings ratio in Boise over the last 15 years. So you can see in March, the value to earnings was 9.2. 
in Boise. So the typical value of 422 is 9.2 higher than uh, the, the typical annual earnings of 46,000. This is a super elevated level, 9.2. Like anything above 6.0, is an elevated level and Boise's all the way up to 9.2. You can see if we zoom back in 07 that actually the value to earnings ratio in 07 before the last crash wasn't even close to as high as it is today, it was 7.1. And it went from 7.1 all the way down to 3.8 at the depths of the last housing crash when prices in Boise went down by 40%. And so it was actually at this period from like 2010 to probably like 2016 where Boise was a good value, right? It was a good market to buy in because the prices were more closely aligned with the fundamentals in the market. But basically since then it's completely detached and now we have value to earnings which is all the way up to 9.2 and that is just super, super high. And like I said, that means that local people cannot afford the homes in Boise and that's a big problem for the fundamentals of the housing market if locals cannot afford it. Now I'm just gonna show you guys two other cities in Idaho because we've gotten some requests for these other cities. Coeur d'Alene, which is further north on the border of Washington, and then Idaho, Idaho Falls, which is further east on the border of Wyoming. And we, we can look at the value to earnings in these three markets together, and we have kind of the, the danger zone, 6.0 .8, value to earnings outlined. And we can see that Coeur d'Alene actually looks even worse than Boise with a value to earnings ratio of 10.3. So in Coeur d'Alene, things are even more expensive relative to local wages in Boise. And uh, that's just really problematic for the long-term fundamentals of the market. Things in Idaho Falls look a little better. Uh, 6.3 value to earnings, it's kind of getting into the danger zone, but it's a much more fundamentally sound level than what we're seeing in Boise and Coeur d'Alene. So really almost all of Idaho, I think is overpriced, but if you had to pick one market that was a little more fairly priced than others, Idaho Falls would be that market. All right guys, so Boise is in a big real estate bubble right now. I don't think there's a city in America that's in a bigger bubble. Like prices are so disconnected from wages and the local fundamentals. It just means likely that bad things are gonna occur in the market in the future. Now, however, I know a lot of you still live there, right? And you might wanna buy a home there anyway. A lot of you might wanna invest there anyway. So what I'm now gonna do is I'm gonna show you some of the specifics in Boise. We're gonna look at uh, different zip codes, different neighborhoods, so you can understand where um, the value is, where the expensive parts of town are. You can understand where the areas with the highest appreciation are. And you can also look at maybe to find the areas that have the most supply constriction and the areas that are most exposed to new development and new supply, which could lower prices. So on this map, we are looking at every zip code in the Boise metro area, and we're looking at them based on the, how expensive or affordable, relatively speaking, to the market the homes are. So the more purple or magenta the zip code looks, the higher the prices. The more translucent or um, blue it looks, the lower the prices. And so we can first see that Boise is actually a really big metro area, lots and lots of land. And look, we're in Idaho. Idaho has lots and lots of land, lots and lots of space. So Boise covers a lot of ground. And if we zoom in here, we can see uh, the, some of the most expensive parts of town would cover 83702. This is a zip code that covers downtown Boise, uh, as well as up kind of into some uh, more mountainous regions here where there's some nice homes. Typical home price of $700,000 compared to a median household income of 63,000. If we then go to 83712, we see uh, also typical home price of 730,000, even higher. And then if we zoom west to uh, a town called Eagle, we also see home prices of 740,000. So really these three zip codes here are the most expensive parts of town. If we go kind of more to uh, the middle here, Meridian, um, that's more in between, typical home price of 480. If we go out west to Nampa, uh, typical price of 320. So we get more affordability as we head west and as we head south. Now I've switched this map up to, instead of just showing what the, the price is, now we're looking at what the appreciation has been over the last five years. And the more magenta it looks, the higher the growth. The more blue it looks, the lower the growth. So we can see, first of all, a lot of magenta in general, which means that Boise's just a really high growth market 
in general. But we can see out west is where we've seen a lot of appreciation. If we go to Nampa 83651, we've seen 130% appreciation the last five years. So the, the typical home price in 83651 has gone from 140,000 to 320,000. Absolutely nuts in just five years. If we go to Caldwell, 83605, the typical home price has gone from 134,000 to 310,000. So it's really these areas out west which are just dominating the appreciation charts, plus 110%, plus 120% everywhere. Um, if we go back more towards Meridian in the middle, we're seeing plus 90%. Eagle seeing plus 90%. That would be you know, high for any other market, but it's more average for Boise. And then if we head kind of to more the center of town, uh, you know, this downtown zip code, as well as the, the further northern, um, you know, mountain, mountain towns here, 83702, 100% appreciation. So really just crazy appreciation in Boise across the board. And I think as far as buying in Boise, if you're looking for security, I would say don't buy in Boise in general, because it's a very insecure market right now. But if you're looking for security in Boise, right, you know you're gonna buy there no matter what. What you probably want to do is focus on the areas that are more densely populated, that have um, more uh, of a density, more of a footprint, more buildings, less open space. Because it's the areas with open space where there's lots and lots of new building, those areas are going to get hit harder in a downturn. This is the way it worked back in 2007, 2008, in all of these growth markets in the southwest and mountain areas. It was the um, newer kind of fringe areas, fringe suburbs with lots and lots of new homes getting developed. Those were the ones that got hit the hardest because there's really no supply constraints. Builders can go in there and just throw housing up left and right. So if you do need, if you do need to buy in Boise um, and you do prioritize security, you're probably going to want to pay more attention to the areas with higher density. And you can see what I'm talking about now on this map where we're looking at zip codes again, but we're looking at the aerial we're looking at the aerial view here. So if we can see back to 83702, home prices in this zip have doubled, right? Why I think this zip code will do better than others is that you can see it's actually fairly dense. There's lots of existing structures, lots of existing buildings. And then as we head up further north, we actually run into mountains, right? And it's harder to develop in and around mountains. Similar situation here in 83703 more density, more mountainous, more supply constraint, right? But if we were to head out west, right? If we were to go to Meridian here, we can see that, oh man, there is just a lot of land in Meridian, a lot of land for development, right? If we head even a little further west to Nampa, which we looked at as one of the fastest appreciating markets, I mean, Jesus, look at all this space look at all this space to build new homes the situation uh, is also the same in caldwell 83605 just acres and acres and acres of space to build new homes so it's really these kind of more um you know the middle part of the metro meridian out west caldwell nampa uh, there's going to definitely be supply issues in these areas as um, boise has tons and tons of building relative to other cities it's one of the five um heaviest building metros in the U.S. as far as constructing single family homes. So a lot of them are going here, right? Less of them are going here. So in terms of security, right? If you have to pay a high price in a bubble, you'd rather do it in an area with more density and less supply competition. So if you are, you know, looking and want more detail on Boise, I would recommend, you know, obviously look at the aerial map, get a sense for the area, visit the neighborhoods, but look at metrics like population density. Right, the higher the population density, it's likely the less new building that will occur. You also want to probably be in an area with a, a high uh, educated population, a high number of college degrees, higher levels of income. Those areas will likely withstand a downturn better. Again, it's the more fringy areas with some lower price points that have lots of new supply. Those are the areas that are probably gonna get hit the hardest in the next crash. And let me tell you, I mean, Boise right now I would say most cities in the U.S. look better today than they did in 07. Like the fundamentals in most cities in the U.S. is better today. And I wouldn't expect as big a crash in most cities, but Boise is the exception. Boise is like the rare city that looks very much like Vegas and Phoenix and Reno in 2005, 2006, as well as what Boise itself looked like back then. 
um, prices are super high relative to wages tons and tons of space to build lots and lots of new building occurring a lot of the demand just simply based on external uh, investors from different parts of the country that can just you know people love to talk about that uh, you know investor demand that is such a fickle demand source because again if you're an investor that buys a home and say you want to rent it out or you want it for appreciation you will be pressured to sell it if you sense that the market's going down right if someone lives in Boise, if uh, you know they live in their home, they don't have that same pressure, right? Because they're actually using their home to fulfill a purpose, to live. Investors, they destabilize markets, and uh, Boise uh, is seeing a big uptick in investor demand. And that's, you know, I guess, good for the market for appreciation in the short term, but makes it highly volatile, highly unstable in the long run. So yeah, Boise, that's my number one market for a housing bubble in the US. I think I wouldn't be surprised if we saw 30 to 40% declines in prices um, over the next couple of years as the, as the bubble peaks and then bursts. So you know, be, you gotta do your due diligence. You know, if you are gonna buy in Boise, you gotta really do your due diligence and make sure you don't overpay by too much. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you are an investor who's looking in Boise or maybe another part of Idaho or another part of the US and you wanna learn how to use data to make better investment decisions, well, good, that's what I do for a living. Uh, I help people use data like I just showed you today, both at the macro level and the micro level down to the zip code to find the areas with the best appreciation potential, the most investment security. So go to my website, www.reventureconsulting.com, submit a contact form and let me know what you're doing in real estate and we can talk and see if ReVenture's one-on-one -on -one coaching program where we can walk through this data together in the markets that you care about if it's a, a good fit for you. So go to www reventureconsulting.com submit a contact form and i will get back to you and guys if you enjoyed this video please just hit the like button that's all i ask i spend a lot of time um, putting this content together love sharing the data with you in return just hit that like button it tells youtube it's a good video it will get me a bit more exposure all right guys i hope you enjoyed this stay tuned for this coming sunday uh, Reventure is going to have its next video. We're going to be looking at the most affordable, most bang for your buck markets in America, where even in a bubble, you can find good value. We're going to look at the cities where even in 2021 at sky high prices, investors and home buyers can still get a good deal. So you're not going to miss that on Sunday. Until then, this is Nick from Reventure Consulting signing off.